Are you using your job to try to fulfill or fill a void in your life? This is for Black Women of Toxic Jobs. I want to have this conversation with you based upon a lot of conversations that I've had with Black women in relation to a toxic job. If you don't know me already, I'm Dr. Kamani. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, a toxic job survivor, but more importantly, I'm a toxic job liberator for Black women. So this topic might seem a little sensitive, but I want to have real talk with you. So I've had, again, a number of conversations with Black women, therapy, coaching, consultation calls, where they have shared to me about ways that they've really dedicated their lives to their jobs. And they've done so and, and wanted to aspire in a lot of ways, right? High performing, high achieving Black women, but at the expense of um, not having time for other things in their lives. So if they may want certain things and they don't have those things in their lives, they might pour more of their time, more of their energy into their jobs because they feel that the job might give more reinforcement, may re reward, or that the job will, will be there in a way that maybe other things that they wanted in their lives, it's not there. So they may see the job as something um, easy or easier to uh, accomplish certain things or achieve certain things just by their sheer effort, right? So working hard, 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 you know, going up and above and doing all these things. However, you know, what is so... Um, I think heartbreaking for a lot of Black women, high achieving Black women, is realizing that you've worked so hard, made so many sacrifices, particularly for a job, and you do these things because you felt that there was going to be a payoff for you, right? Which is natural. You want to see natural consequences as a result of your hard work. What you may encounter is that you get even more work you get situations where people are sabotaging you, or let's say you get into a leadership position, what you might experience, which I've heard from a lot of Black women, high achieving Black women, is that once you get in that position, people are second guessing you all the time. They're questioning your leadership. There's so much backlash that you encounter. And so I invite us to think about ways that we can have work-life balance. So what that means is, yes, you work hard, you do what you need to do with the job, but be mindful of the job becoming all-consuming. And if there's other areas of your life where you feel like there's not quite of a balance, are you putting more energy at the job? So you're, you, don't, you don't have certain things that you want over here, so you're putting more energy into that job. I invite you to really look at that and when you recognize you're doing that, it might be helpful if you're not in therapy to go to therapy and talk about that and talk about ways that you are going up and above at your job and then more than likely not getting the rewards that you would like. And it doesn't really fulfill that void. So you may be trying to work harder and harder to fulfill the void in this other area of your life. But if you stop and think about, wait a minute, maybe I'm trying to fulfill this void in a way that's not healthy for me, because now I'm working, working, working harder and harder and harder, which again, may not get you the reward you want, and you may start experiencing physical and or psychological symptoms. So think about work-life balance. So work-life balance is you do your work, you do the best you can at your job, but you also have a personal life and you also recognize what your personal goals are and you start doing activities or starting doing things that helps to address those voids you have in your life, maybe personally, okay? So it might even be getting involved in other professional organizations that is not connected to your job, but maybe that's a void you have in terms of connection, maybe hanging out with your friends or maybe getting involved in interest groups or volunteering or other get a pet. So there's other things for us to think about with work-life balance. And I, and I want us to have this conversation because I think it's Black women, we're always told that we have to work, 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 and we don't have time to rest. And, you know, we can rest when we're dead and all that kind of stuff, okay? We have to say no because that is harmful to us. And we deserve to have joy in our lives as well. We deserve to have, you know, if you work that hard, you deserve to play. You deserve to have a, a time to rest. You, you are um, encouraged to think about these things that counter the narrative that so many of us have received as Black women. So again, you deserve joy. 
You deserve all these things. And again, you have to be mindful of when you're overworking. So overworking is you're taking home work, at, you know, during the week, on the weekends. You don't take vacation. I've heard so many Black women say to me, um, I have like this huge amount of hours, you know, of paid time off, but I haven't taken my time. Okay. So again, that's the work-life balance is off. And I don't know is if you're in a situation like that, why is that happening? Are you again, overworking as a way to fulfill a void in your life? And I've also talked to black women who've talked to me. And I think the devastation for them too, is that they may have thrown so much into their careers and they get to a certain point and they realize for what, you know, I did all of this for what I've heard black women say, you know what? I've spent all of my time at this job. I don't have a personal life. They even say, I don't even have a personal life because I devoted everything to this job. And my hope is that if that's you, that you pause and think about what is the life that you want for yourself? Sit and pause and think about that. If your life is not the life that the life you're living right now, it's not the life that you want for yourself, then I invite you to start thinking about how do I make these changes so that I can have that life that I want? And if I don't know how to do those things, am I open to looking at resources that can help me do that? Okay. So the resources that I have available for you are all of my videos, my YouTube videos, which are free. All Black women can look at these. And I want everybody, I want Black women to see these videos and to hear what I'm saying, hear what my guests are saying see what I'm doing by example as a toxic job survivor and know that it is possible to pivot and it is possible to have work-life balance and still be able to bring in good income. Okay. So just remember that. And with for resources, think about resources that are available to you. If that's therapy, if it's coaching, if it's any of the masterclasses that I offer, if it's the summit that I offer, Think about these resources and follow up on them, okay? So I have two masterclasses coming up, which is actually a two-part. So the first part is how to get ready to leave that toxic job. So again, this is what are the steps you need to take? These are the practical steps. It's not just mine. It's the practical steps to prepare you for getting ready to leave a toxic job and doing well, okay? So finding ways to replace your income. So we're going to talk about that on October 20th. So it's me, Marissa, Patrice, Latrice, all these people coming in, Black women coming in to support you about career pivot, what to do legally if you want to um, possibly um, think about possible legal recourse. We're going to talk about that as well. So that's October 20th. So again, going across the screen is the information about registration. It'll also be in my description section. And know with all the things that I offer that are live, you will not be seen on camera. It's a webinar format. Your name will not be listed, okay? And then the part two, which you can go to as well. So you can go to just one or both, or, you know, just it's up to you. So the second masterclass is October 27th, and that is how to heal from a toxic job. Because when you leave a job like that, you've given so much, and it's actually a grieving process. And so we're going to talk about that as well. We're going to have guest speakers with that as well. And I'll tell you more information about that, or you can just access that information by clicking the link. Okay. So please give this video a thumbs up. Also, please share this video with at least two other Black women. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Okay. See you later. Bye.